after you present the truth of Islam, you don't have to force him. You don't have to convert anyone at the point of the sword or the point of the can. It, it is forbidden, it is haram to convert anyone at the point of the sword or at the point of the can. But it is compulsory you have to deliver the message. Deliver the truth. If he does not accept it, then say that no compulsion religion. Truth stands up here from heaven. But before you speak, you only know two words of the Quran. Lakum dinukum al yaddin and la ayat Finish. That gives us a blank check that we should not do da'wah. Finish. You have done the job. The Quran gives us permission that you have to sit and just relax. And people say, that see, religion is a personal faith. It's a personal belief. It is something to do with an individual. You should not interfere in somebody else's private belief. It's a personal thing. Therefore, we should stick to our religion. You can talk about anything else but religion. It will hurt the person's feeling. I do agree, religion is a personal belief. I've got no objection to that. But let me give you an example. Let's suppose you go somewhere on, on a hill station for an outing with your family. You have your wife and her children along with you. And one of your child is a small child of hardly three years old. Your son. And when you go on a hill station for an outing, while you're talking with your wife, your small son of three years old, he runs far away which you are unaware about. By the time you realize that he has gone far away from you, you see that he has reached the end of the cliff. Even if you shout, your voice can't reach him. You can only see him as a minute dot from there. And you see that he is very close to the cliff. He is walking closer and closer to the cliff. Even if you shout, your voice won't reach him. There you see that close to your son is an elderly gentleman, a very good pious gentleman who is standing. And your son is while walking and running, he comes closer to the cliff, to the end of the cliff. And he's very close to the elderly gentleman. The elderly gentleman sees him, but he minds his own business. And your son, he falls over the cliff. When you can see this from far away, the moment you approach that old man, won't you blame him? Won't you? You say that the elderly gentleman, he had knowledge. He had some intelligence. Couldn't he have stopped my small son from falling over the cliff? Only thing he had to do was to stretch his hand. He did not even have to take a step forward. He was so close to that young son of mine. Only thing he had to do was stretch his hand and my son would have been saved. Believe me, that elderly gentleman didn't push your son. He didn't ask your son to jump. But still, won't you blame him? You will say that he was an elderly gentleman. He could have easily stopped my son. Why didn't he do it? My son is a masoom child. What does he know? He is ignorant. Won't you blame him? No, he is behaving like us like a Muslim. He says, it's my personal belief. Why should I interfere with somebody else's son's life? See, what difference does it make to me when he's dying? If he jumps, I'm minding my own business. Let him mind his business. In the same way, when we can see these non-Muslims, we can see that they're going to the ditch, they're going to Jahannam. What are we doing? Nothing. We are behaving like that elderly gentleman. We are minding our own business. We are minding our own business. We aren't making any effort to see to it that the people around us are prevented from entering the hellfire. <laughs> Suppose your neighbor happens to be non-Muslim and if you do not deliver the message to him on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask your neighbor that did you get the message of Islam? He said, no Allah, I didn't get the message. So Allah says, Allah will tell him that it was a duty to see to it that you obtain the truth. Because if you didn't obtain the truth, you have to go to hell. Allah will ask you that 
Did you deliver the message to your non-Muslim neighbor? And if you say no, you will follow him. You will follow him. It's compulsory that you should do da'wah. It's the duty of every Muslim. And Allah gives us the criteria for entering Jannah. Allah gives the criteria for entering Jannah in Surah al asr in chapter 103, verse number 1 to 3. It says, Wal as, inna al insan la fi khus, illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqi wa tawasaw bil sabr. Which means, that by the token of time, man is verily in a state of loss. Allah is taking an oath in the Holy Quran. By the token of time, it is one of the biggest oaths that Allah takes in the Holy Quran. Sometimes Allah takes the oath of the fig tree, of the tino, of the of the fig, of the olive, of the stars, of the moon. Allah takes various oaths. But this oath is one of the biggest oaths. He says, well, us by the token of time, by the fleeting time as it passes away. In the insana of your that man is verily in loss. Man is in khasara. Illa ladina amun, except those who are faith. Amun salihati, those who have righteous deeds. Watawasaw bil haq, those who exhort people to the truth. And watawasaw bil sab, those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. Allah says, the whole of humankind is in loss except those people who have faith, who have righteous deeds, who have got people to truth, who do dawa and islah, and those who have got people to patience and perseverance. These are the minimum four criteria required by the Holy Quran for any human being to enter Jannah. If you have faith, you will be fasting, you may give the path, you may have righteous deed, etc. But if you don't do dawah, you shall not enter Jannah. Allah says, minimum four criteria required. Faith, righteous deed, dawah and islah, that's exhorting people to truth, and exhorting people to patience for savings. All four are important. If any one of this is missing, Allah says that all four criteria are required. If anyone is missing, you shall not enter Jannah. It's compulsory duty of every Muslim to do dawah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 33, that who is better in speech? Then a person who invites people to the way of thy Lord. Who is better in speech than the person who invites people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who says that I am amongst the Muslim. It is compulsory that every Muslim should be a Thai. But it's not compulsory that he should be a full-time Thai. It's compulsory that he should at least be a part-time Thai. But the Quran also says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 104, that let there arise out of you a people, a group of people, enjoying what is good and forbidding what is wrong. That means the Holy Quran says that amongst the Muslims, there should be a group of Muslims who should be full time dying. And it's the duty of the rest of the Ummah to support these dying. Dawah is compulsory for everyone. How we have full-time doctors, full-time engineers, full-time teachers, why don't we have full-time missionaries? Why don't we have full-time dai? Why? We, we keep the leftover for Islam. You know, a free time. Those people who are rejects of society, we put them into the field of Islam. Suppose our son fails, then we say we put him down only. We want to make him half in the Quran. He fails in the school to take him out and put him in a madrasa. See, Islam requires the best of people. Why don't you put your son who has become an engineer into the field of Islam? Why not? Put the cream of the society into the work of Islam. It is the opposite. When you find that he's handicapped, 
ایک انٹے تو